They said all teenagers scared of living poop out of me. They could care less as long as someone will pee. So darken your pants with all the pee that you glance. Something alone, but not me. I have a guitar cover of that solo, by the way. It's not the greatest solo. It's not the greatest cover, but it's a cover nonetheless. A warm dunes motel for my chemical romance. <laughs> my name is Jonas. I'm carrying the wheel. Come sit next to me. Pour yourself some tea. Just like grandma made when we couldn't find sleep. Two, two, drain left right on time. My name is White Bill. Got a box full of your toys. Still making noise. Making noise. Workers are going home. Yeah! Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so hard. That's so hard. But anyway, I need water. Let's hope I don't pass out. Cause uh, who would have guessed that a who would have guessed that a hike is pretty draining? Oh well. Hello everyone. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's not Weezer Wednesday. So, uh, it's another classic we listen to, I guess, because, uh, we're listening to a album that's pretty much 20 years old already, which is, um, weird to say, but, um, as you can see right here, we're looking at Mr. Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge by My Chemical Romance. If you don't know who My Chemical Romance is, um, I guess, <laughs> I guess you're a little too late. They, they released a song, like, two years ago, but they haven't done too much since, but they are a classic rock band who was ruling the 2000s and I guess a little bit of the 2010s with their whole, you know, the whole emo stuff. I, I know Gerard has said that it's not the same as the emo that he grew up with. We just shoved them in the emo category because why not? I wasn't too into My Chemical Romance when I was young because um, I thought emo was for fucking losers. <laughs> but I've come around. I've noticed that even if I don't confine to the emo standard anymore, I can still look at the music and say, wow, this music is great. And that describes this album pretty well. Of course, people are probably going to guide you towards their album that happened two years later, which is The Black Parade, which is a classic too. They're, they're, they're both great. I haven't listened to this album fully in a while. I haven't listened to The Black Parade fully in a while either. But it's not 2026. It's 2024. So we're going to look at the 2004 album. Very classic album. Lots of hits. Lots of hits and lots of great guitar work too. You'll see. You'll see. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to re-listen to this album. I liked it from what I remember hearing. And um, yeah, I like My Chemical Romance. It's like probably like Fall Out Boy, then My Chemical Romance, then I don't know, like Paramore maybe. I don't know. <laughs> what, what else counts as that emo style? Those three are probably actually put Fall Out Boy third. Paramore, MCR, Fall Out Boy. There you go. That's a good three. And uh, yeah, that's how I'm feeling right now. Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge is the second studio album for My Chemical Romance. The album was released in June 2004. This record is the last to feature Matt Pellissier on drums. Frontman Gerard Way described the album in an interview saying that Revenge is really the band. Bullets is the band trying to find itself. By the time we hit Revenge, we had really become My Chemical Romance. Frontman Gerard Way has recredited the album as a pseudo-conceptual horror story. The concept for this album is that a man, thought to be one of the demolition lovers from their first album, is gunned down in a fight, but makes a deal with the devil that if he brings him the souls of a thousand evil men, his life will be restored and he'll be reunited with his love. Otherwise, he gets dragged to hell and will never see his lover again. Each song is tied to the plot as seen in the comment section. Well, there's your little synopsis of the album. Let's get into it. There's a ton of hits. You'll see. You'll see. Dancing. All in for you. Oh god, Sanford's album is so good! Sorry, I was listening to it on my hike. Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. My Chemical Romance, June 8th, 2004. 13 songs, a little under 40 minutes. Oh boy. Track number one, a classic banger, Helena. Oh my god. Time to get in again. Burn! Just like the matches try to escape of everyone you knew. Goodbye, you can't hide. 
Remember the plain juice <coughs> Oh god, my voice is already gone. What's the worst thing I can say? Things are better if I say good night. So long and good night. Came a time I brought you the tears again. Very hurt you so. And what's the word? Where's your heart you break? Save you now tonight. What's the worst that I could say? Things are better if I stay. So long and good night. So long and good night. Song is so good! I don't know how to do the drums. Both are cars collide. What's it I can say? Song is so good, it's breaking my computer, man. Well, if you carry on this way, things are better if I stay. They really dropped one of the best opening tracks in the, uh, of that year, man. See, there's there's just so much to dive into. There's just so much to dive into with this song. Sometimes titled Helena, So Long and Good Night, on digital retailers like iTunes, was written as a tribute to Gerard and Mikey Way's late grandmother. She was called Helen by her friends while her actual name was Elena. Gerard calls this song an angry open letter to himself. He expresses the hatred he felt for himself after her death. It's about why I wasn't around for this woman who was so special to me. Why I wasn't there for the last year of her life. It's worth noting that the greatest hits album, May Death Never Stop You, the track is simply titled as Helena. Well, so emotional, banging, hard, and uh, yeah. You gotta feel for the man, cause losing a loved one like that is tough. The amount of regret you feel, or regret, guilt you feel even though it's obviously not your fault yeah it's it takes a toll on a person shout to grandmas all right banger classic um legendary iconic emo black you know the drill classic all right track number two give them hell kid oh oh hey hey I never have a fear. Beginning sounds punk as fuck. Oh, thank you. You're beautiful. Shout out to dresses. We're here. I never have a fear. Yesterday. The sharpened lives are the deadliest to be. Come on. Come on, lay the solo down. Or not. Never mind. Did yesterday. So this is when after like the death happens or like, I think it says the companion doesn't know that the deal with the devil has been made. Apparently they like to play this one live the most, which I can agree. This is so powerful, so energetic. I, I can agree why they like this. To the end, track three, the film. Is this, is this the POV of the devil? If you marry me, would you bury me? Bring me to the end. Say the vows you take, the life you make, the heart you break, and all the cyanide you drink. Whoa, whoa! The pressure of the body she lands. Got nasty blisters from the money she spent. Barbie. Can bury me? Would you bury me? Say goodbye. Say goodbye. And all the cyanide you drink to the last parade. Not the black one, or maybe who knows? Come on, come on. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. And all the sign that you dream. Oh, 
man, aren't we just having a rocking start, a banging start? To the end is based on William Fall. William. Holy crap, I can't read. Sorry, the spanger was so good. To the end is based on William Faulkner's short story, A Rose for Emily. The title also references a 1994 song by Blur of the same name. Oh, shout out to 94. In terms of the three cheers storyline, it appears that the protagonist crashes a wedding celebration to rack up more murders towards his goal of killing a thousand evil souls. Ah, that's that makes more sense instead of... Uh, Devil POV. Eh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, when he said let's go down, I thought he meant like literally or like, you know, go into hell. But uh, yeah, that's where I got the devil connection from. But this makes more sense knowing that he's shooting up a wedding or, you know, for lack of better terms, destroying a wedding. Yeah, some horror elements mixed with some fucking rock, dude. Track four. You know what they do to guys like me? I'm pretty sure that's what the, pretty sure what, that's what the title says. Oh, you know what they do to guys like us in prison? My bad. <laughs> it's that um what's the word it's that um it's i'm forgetting the word but there's a certain vibe that describes this and it's very theater like obviously very conceptual like how pretty much most most of mcr's category is but again i haven't listened to i haven't listened to um frick what's that 2010 album don't ask nah, nah, nah. Nah, 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 nah. danger days Danger Days. I haven't listened to that one. I pretty much listened to this one and um, Black Parade. Where was I going with this? Anyway, it's very, this is a very theatric track so far. Well, I mean, when you're dead. <laughs> oh God. Oh. I might never notice the screaming like that, but it's pretty hard. Yeah, this guy's losing it in prison, man. Too late, too late. Whoa, it's like a reference to the cover art. Yeah, light that bitch on fire! Light that bitch on fire! Hey, if I'm going down, I'm taking you bitch asses with me. Oh, what a laugh. Oh, another classic track. What track are we on? Track five, I'm not okay. In parentheses, I promise. I'm the Joker, baby. Well, if you want it honestly, that's all you had to say. Want to let you down or for all the dirty looks. The photographs your boyfriend took. Not okay. I'm not okay. You wear me out What will it take to show you that it's not the life it will show for the last time Take a good hard look I'm not oh, I'm not okay out. And the solo comes, the solo comes Can't tell me these songs aren't beggars, man. Grabs your boyfriend took. Okay. Are you sure, buddy? Uh, okay. I'm okay now. Trust me. I'm not a fucking gay. Yeah, uh, you know, mental health struggles, personal problems. Uh, shitty situations, shitty relationships. Sometimes you just gotta tell yourself, man, I'm in a shitty situation, but I'll be, th I'll be getting through it. Another classic, The Ghost of You. Actually, I'm gonna restart this because we should, we should probably look into, we should probably look into that banger deeper. The story of this song is about a girl with interpersonal problems, such as her boyfriend sharing naked photos, asking for help from her friend, the narrator. The narrator is suffering from his own very real problems, but puts them aside to help the girl out, who doesn't really listen to him. Oh buddy, oh buddy, we've all been there. The running theme throughout the song is that she really does not understand other people's problems. She loves all these songs with deep meanings, Claims that they speak to her and that she can relate, but really she doesn't know 
what any of it means. The narrator finally tries to get it to her so she can understand that her problems are very different from his. Hers are external, his are internal, and that doesn't mean his are any less real or painful. Yes, everyone has problems. Obviously. We just gotta learn empathy. Life doesn't have to be a whole like, who can outpity the other person, right? We all have problems. There's really no gain from going like, oh, well, if you're suffering, that, you know, I'm, I'm suffering more, so uh, I should get a medal for this. It doesn't really matter. We all have problems. Some are definitely worse than the other. You know, pick your battles. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can all get through this together, I guess. What do the comments say about this? I think he's trying to say he's not okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, track number six, The Ghost of You. Anyone seen the music video for that one? Where they're like in D-Day? Yeah, that was freaking crazy. I wait forever. At the end of the world, or the last thing I see, you are never coming home, never coming home. Could I? Remember now. Fucking gruesome. At the end of the world Never coming home, never coming home Could I, should I You never ever told me And all the smiles that are never gonna harm me Never coming home, could I, should I Not always well, I was about to say, not, not everything on this album is like Super fast paced and heavy rock but emotional parts of the story. I mean, shit, when you're dealing with loss and grief, it's gonna be pretty ugly. The end of the world. For the last thing I see. Never coming home, never coming home. Damn, didn't even get to finish your song, man. With some of the most extreme grief and powerful vocals from Three Cheers, the ghost of you explores the heartbreak one feels with the unexpected loss of a loved one. Continuing on the album's story, the Ghost of You tells listeners of the propagandist propagandist. The Ghost of You tells listeners of the protagonist's longing for his missing love and frustration from worrying he'll never complete his task to bring her back. The music video features the band as soldiers from World War II. It is believed that the scene is set on the Normandy invasion. Hundreds of thousands died that day, and the video features Mikey being shot. Gerard later said in an interview that Mikey's death was director Mark Zabayek's idea. Protagonist longing for his missing love never completed his task to bring her back, but isn't he the one that's dead? In regards to the album, he's the one that's dead, right? And he has to kill people to go back to life with the lover, right? Gunned down in a fight, but makes a deal with the devil that if he brings in the souls of a thousand evil men, his life will be restored and he'll be reunited with his love. Otherwise, he gets dragged to hell and will never see his lover again. Each song is tied to the plot as seen as a comic section. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, but uh, very emotional track, crazy ballad. And I, I really like the music video for that. Then again, like, I was a sucker for World War II media back in the day. It, it makes sense as to why that'd be one of my favorite videos from, from the album, I guess. Really emotional track. Anyway, track seven, the jet set life is going to kill you. And that's going to with a G-O-N-N-A. Yeah, let's lie together, ri Rivers. I just called Gerard Way Rivers Cuomo. I'm so sorry, guys. But yes, let's lie. Let's manipulate. Oh, buddy. Drug abuse. Okay. Different kind of lie. Oh, is there, a, is there a little bit of vocal auto-tune? Sugar, tragedies. Oh, brother. They really did set the blueprint, huh? Get down. It's the hardest part of living. That's why you don't do drugs, man. Don't drink alcohol. I get high on life. Straight edge, buddy. It's clobbering time. My name's Garrett. My name is Garrett. And I'm carrying the wheel. 
sugar. Gerard, another ladies man, of course. But not teenagers. Teenagers scared the living shit out of him. Interlude, track eight. This brother just wants to see his lover, man. So badly. So badly. He's throwing up a prayer. Imagine that, like, the devil's in the other room just peeking in. Crazy. Coming up soon. Track nine. Thank you for the venom. This is one of my favorites off the album. Like, in the beginning, this sounds so much like, um, Tornado of Souls. See in the eye of the tornado. Let a thousand days go. Believe I wear this on my sleeve. A reason to believe. So give me all your poison and give me all your pill. Your hopeless hearts and make me ill. After something that you'll never kill. What this fire and will. It sounds like a criminal that has nothing to give. Nothing to lose, man. Hallelujah, lock and love. Like, the energy here is fucking insane. The protagonist in the song sounds like he has nothing to lose. Doesn't give a single fuck. Give me all you hopeless hearts and make me ill. Come on. Come on. Never make me leave. I wear this on my sleeve. Reason to believe. I'm dead for Oh man, yeah, I know why this why this is definitely one of my favorites off the album. But look at this. Mercy for Paul Le Venin, which means thank you for the venom in French, appears in the album sleeve of My Chemical Romance's previous record, Bullets. Gerard Way stated that the song is a comment on music at the time as well. A lot of fear mixed in with self-loading. It is a message to critics that the band is not making music just to be famous, but they want their fans to be a part of it too. It is also very well, geez, it is also very well known for being a song that inspires people to not give up and do something with their lives instead of taking their own away. Oh, so it's also a shot at whatever criticisms they had at the time? I guess so. Like the way uh, you're running after something that you'll never kill, if this is what you want then fire at will. I mean, sounds like a lot of things, sounds like a guy who doesn't give a shit, wants to keep living, or having like a huge adrenaline rush, or you know, do what you want. We're gonna do whatever makes us great and the fans, the fans will hopefully like it. Which, as a little fan of My Chemical Romance, I like it. So yeah, fuck you critic, whoever you want. Anyway, track 9, I'm losing track man. Track 10, hang em high. Very western. Oh, it's a reference to the 1968 western movie of the same name starring Clint Eastwood. Makes sense. Uh, I don't know if you'd lie to me. <laughs> God! Metallica reference? Oh. Put it down. Put it down, man. I got a duel. I got a duel. Okay. Oh yeah, it's not a fashion statement, it's a death wish. Banger, baby. What you did to me, or oh, what I'll do to you, you get a lifetime. I think I had this modded in my 2K. Let's go! Do you remember that day when we met? Hey, this gets harder. Well, it did. And I've gone, you'll kill my enemy. Inflicted temporary from the dead. I'll take you home with me. Taking back the life you stole. We never got that far Need to think all through the night Kill me now It's just you and I Your starless eyes remain 
And then, hooray! What you kill me? In my sleep, I will avenge my ghost with every breath that I take. Take you home with me. I'm taking back the life you stole. <laughs> He's more than six feet, bitch. Shit, I got water on my shirt. Fuck. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, 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 hey. He's manifesting this shit, man. Banger. Banger. Also one of my favorites off the album. Cemetery Drive. This is that drum beat. Door. Door. <laughs> What an interesting way to put it. Yikes. Um, I don't know, man. That's great. That's not as great. I don't know, man. Miss you. I miss you so Way down. It's introduced in Life on the Murder Scene as Cemetery Drive is about the hardest drive me and Mikey and my band ever went on. We've been on this long road now about four years. Uh, I, I don't know if he's talking about like tour road or like just this whole overall like band artistry thing. Then again, do the same thing for years on end. You're bound to notice it. You're bound to notice it and either you get tired of it or you find a new way to love it. But we're reaching our final track on this album because apparently there's a track 15, there's a track 14, but I'm assuming that's like a deluxe track, whatnot. We're reaching our final track. I never told you what I do for a living. Please inform us what you do for a living. That guitar, that pick slide. That's a little sus. Be me. You dirty freak. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fucking serial killer. And he's horny. He's horny to kill people, man. There we go. There we go. Dude, Gerard is so good at screaming, man. I'm jealous of that bastard. Is this a different time signature? Shout out A Blinken. Come on, come on. He tried, man. He tried, man. He lied, man. And we are at the end. Woo. Wow. Well, as you can tell, that was a great album. That was a great experience. For track 13, you know, it sounds like the uh, protagonist, either he's trying to catch those souls, he's catching the souls, but he didn't come close to the goal. So he's, you know, he didn't reach his end of the deal. So he's done for. Or you could also spit it in a way that uh, he did reach his goal. He did grab those thousand souls, but the devil lied. You don't make a deal with the devil because uh, that shit can be fucking bad. <laughs> For lack of better terms, uh, the devil's a manipulator. He's a demon. He'll fuck you up, man. Unless you think he's badass, then go for that. But anyway, yeah. What does Genius say? Wraps up the album with the ending of the Demolition Lovers and the man completing his deal with the devil. In this song, he finally comes to terms with the fact that he will never be re reunited with his lover. After being asked to kill 1,000 evil men, he discovers that the last one he must kill is himself. Oh! Wow. That's, uh, that's an interesting way to put it. Well, that's unfortunate. So that's what he meant by he tried. I mean, he did he did reach the goal, which is great. But um, yeah, you're still dead. <laughs> you ain't reaching your lover, buddy. That's why you don't make deals with the devil. You just dance with them. Shout out Metallica, ninety seven reload. But anyway, as the album as a whole, what is what is there not to say? It was high energy, high emotion. It's not as theatrical as the Black Parade. It's still as 
hard hitting as the Black Parade. There's some sick riffs on here too. There's a lot of stuff you can get out here guitar wise too. Which I can appreciate. I can appreciate some great guitar work. And that's what My Chemical Romance has. Bunch of topics that are pretty um, dark, grim. But somehow all combine, con convene, convene with this whole album concept of... And it's a pretty sick album concept, isn't it? You're dead. Make a deal with the devil. You have to find thousand evil souls. And then that twist at the end where... <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert if you haven't listened to the album. But yeah, um, pretty sick story. Sick tunes. Banging tunes. Full of bangers. Classic songs. Yeah, I don't know what to say. This is just a great album. I'd recommend it. When it comes to if I'd recommend it over the Black Parade... Honestly, they go hand in hand. I I don't know. Yeah, they can go hand in hand. I haven't listened to Black Parade in a while, but I wouldn't just recommend the Black Parade. I'd recommend this album too, because it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Still, still great. 20 years later, who would have guessed? I'd recommend you give it a listen. Hopefully you do. And uh, hopefully you don't get sad that My Chemical Romance hasn't done anything in the past few years. But thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying this album with me once again. This is your first listen. Hey. Go listen to it fully. Go listen to it in full now on your streaming service or on vinyl or CD if you have physical media. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. Um, yeah. This is a really fun experience and uh, don't know what else to say. I'd give it a listen if you haven't already. Hopefully I get in a few more reactions because uh, I plan to react to Ride the Lightning, Metallica. Well, I plan to re-listen to it. I think I might do a first listen of Purple Rain. Yes, I know I haven't listened to that Prince album, but I listened to 1999 and Purple Rain came out in 84 as well. So I'm like, huh, I might do that. Or I might just listen on my own, who knows. But if you guys want to see me react to Purple Rain for the first time, then I'll do it, but that depends if whoever whoever's still here at the end. If you're here at the end, hi. Subscribe, like, comment, you know the drill. Alright, goodbye. Shout out to MCR, shout out to emos, I guess. I don't know.